hello everyone welcome to my channel in today's video we are going to talk about introduction of java programming so before talking about java first of all uh, whenever we say java what comes in our head robust programming language platform independent language case sensitive language and etc etc so let's talk about few things so first question why java so previously i think used to uh, have qbasic and all so why shifting from qbasic to java so first of all java is a robust language it means uh, we can rely on java on this language it is uh, hard to crack if we make application if we make websites with java it is a bit hard to crack okay we can uh, rely we can trust this language the second is this is a platform independent language now first of all what is platform independent language now if suppose you have a different kind of configuration in your system and i have a different kind of configuration in my system now if you want to execute your program in my system there'll be no issue that is known as platform independent it means it can work in any configuration any system any on, uh, operating system okay so this is the reason why we should use java for making applications or applets okay so before we uh, see the structure of java programming first we need to talk about some uh, features of java and the first thing comes in my mind is object oriented programming now first of all what is object oriented programming oh. object oriented programming is an approach in which stress is laid on data rather than functions the data values remain associated with the functions of a particular block of the program so as to encourage data security so first of all whenever you're going to write programs on java then you are going to have stress on the data it means you're going to see the data data types primitive data types non primitive data types that we are going to uh, learn in further videos okay so first we need to keep in in, in our mind that we have principles of op language it means there are four major principles we have they are data abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism you can also say that oop is a kind of feature that can be added to any op, uh, programming language if suppose any programming language is not having these features like data abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism it is not a object oriented programming language like c and c++ both are programming languages only but c is not an object oriented programming language since it doesn't have this all features like data abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism but whereas c++ it has these features so we can say c++ is an object oriented programming language like java python these all languages has these features that is why these languages are object oriented programming language okay and uh, those languages those who do not carry these features they are known as procedure oriented programming language that uh, they are like uh, q basic okay fortin these languages are procedure oriented programming languages why because they, they don't do not ca carry these features okay so now i think uh, these uh, object oriented part is bit clear so further you are going to study this in this uh, you know video tutorials i'm going to upload some more videos on object oriented programming so don't worry about it now it is more important to understand the java programming structure so that you can start writing the programs okay then slowly slowly we are going to learn about uh, these all features okay now if we see the java programming structure first of all we have to keep in our mind that java is a case sensitive language it means whenever you write the code you have to be careful with the cases with the grammar of the codes the syntax of the code now if suppose some codes are uh, starting with capital letter and then small letter we have to be careful with the cases the capital letter small letter because anything you make a mistake anywhere you uh, you write small to capital capital to small it will give you an error okay so 
we have to keep in our mind that java is a case sensitive language if previously used to have basic q basic in q basic we don't have didn't, didn't have this kind of uh, you know uh, case sensitive things so we just used to write anything and it will be it will convert into capital you know basic in basic whenever we write basic programming if we write any uh, letter any case it will convert into capital automatically so in java we have to be careful so whenever we write java program first we write import java.util.asterisk see whenever we write java programming every line has a meaning so it is better to uh, you know make notes or you can write somewhere this uh, meaning so that it will be easier for you to write the uh, you know programs so first of all first first thing you need to write this meaning okay then you learn it then you start writing program i advise it so first line import java dot util dot asterisk then as uh, semicolon so this is a package this is also known as library package now first thing you need to understand what is library package it's just a kind of library only uh, you all know that we have a translator compiler and another translator is a uh, interpreter it translates high level language to low level and low level language to high level okay so java uses compiler to translate the programming from high level to low level okay so whenever java compile the program obviously uh, if i'm talking about translator if a translator translates a language to another language the translation uh, translator should uh, understand or translation sh translator should have uh, the uh, you know the capacity to hold or both the language to capacity to hold the command of both the languages so if suppose any code is difficult for the compiler to compile then every code is explained in this packages okay for different types of tasks we have different types of packages so i was talking about the compiler so whenever any code is difficult for the compiler to translate then compiler will go to this package understand reads the uh, command you know and then come back to the program and again start translating continue translating that so it's a kind of library for the compiler to explain every code uh, whichever uh, compiler cannot compile okay so this is why this is known as library package so in for every type of task we have different types of packages okay for my in my next video i'm going to upload the, the different types of packages that we are going to use in our programs okay the next is class i have written class then i have written abc so class is a keyword here uh, okay keyword i have already uploaded a video on keywords and reserve words in my channel please just go through it okay so that you can understand this properly i have given the link in my i button so please visit there and watch it so class is a keyword and also known as the frame of the program now uh, again stuck in a thing what is a frame of a program so obviously the class will hold the whole program okay we have we are going to write all the codes inside this class only that is why class is also known as the frame of the program okay you're going to see if the if i complete this program you're going to understand what is the frame okay now in java uh you know we write the codes we write the statements inside curly brackets it is also known as a block okay whatever set of statements we are going to write we are going to write this uh inside this curly brackets we open it and we have to close it as well so this open and close part is known as a block so we are going to write the program inside the class block okay and uh, this abc you can see this is an identifier uh, identifier what is an identifier the name of anything okay suppose uh, your name is kishan so kishan is a is your identifier okay so the same here abc is the identifier of class that you can also say class name okay after that we write public static void main now we have separate meaning of every word public static void and main right now you won't understand this uh, words but i'm going to explain one thing that is called main main is a function here we have predefined functions in java first of all what is predefined predefined means already defined in the compiler obviously compiler is a kind of software only okay 
so there are certain words there are certain codes functions everything it is uh, feed already feeded inside a compiler okay means they are predefined so compiler knows whenever we write this functions compiler knows what to do okay that's why they are predefined and one more question uh, might rise in your head that how can we understand what is function so how how i'm saying that main is a function you all can see that main ca carries two parentheses open bracket and close bracket just beside of the main function so whichever word carries this open bracket and close bracket is a function okay so functions are two types in java user defined and system defined uh, so main is a system defined function why is a system defined because it is already defined in the compiler whenever we write this compiler knows what to do now coming to the work of main function main function work is to start the execution it means wherever you write main function in your program your execution will start from there okay so if you write at the beginning of the program your execution will start from the beginning of the program if you write at the end it will start from the end okay so it's basically going to start your execution of the program so it's you know mandatory to write main function if you don't write it your execution will not start okay as as simple as that so again we start uh, with curly braces obviously we make a block of main function as well so here we have two blocks class and main function in further programs we have more blocks that i'm going to show you don't worry about it so inside main function we write scanner scanner in equal to new scanner system dot in so as i told you we have predefined functions so here we have predefined classes as well okay so here uh, only a small thing that you need to keep in mind that every predefined class has some predefined functions in inside that okay so here you can say a class is a big box and inside the box you have so many different functions we have uh, for different types of works okay so if you use any predefined class you can use those predefined functions which are there inside the class okay so basically you can understand that class is a big box here a predefined class is a big box and uh, inside the boxes inside the box there are so many predefined functions which which we can use for different types of tasks okay so whichever function we want we can use from there so here inside scanner we have some predefined uh, functions like uh, next line next int we are going to discuss about them uh, but first of all the question why we should write the scanner class should we write the scanner class for every program no whenever we need input from the user if you want input from the user then only you're going to use scanner class in your program otherwise no need to use scanner class at all okay so remember whenever you need input from the user like input a number input this that whatever so if you want input from the user then only scanner class is needed otherwise it is not needed okay next then we have written int a b c now what is int in the data type we have already seen that video we i have a video uh, on data type please go and watch it then you can understand data type a bit more variables are also defined in that video uh, again i'm saying variable is a memory space where we can store values so here we have three variables a b and c but uh, if you can notice a and b it is declared like this normally but c is assigned with zero it is also known as uh, default initialization okay uh, what is initialization uh, just write that uh, initialization is a procedure where we assign any value to the variable it's called initialization okay so if you initialize a zero in a variable it's called default initialization now why it is mandatory uh, you know default initialization works when you are going to calculate anything and you are going to feed that calculation in in a particular variable so that variable should be initialized with zero otherwise you'll get syntax error so here i'm going to calculate thing and i'm going to save that uh, calculation uh, output inside c that is why i have initialized c with zero okay that you have to keep in mind 
नेक्स्ट इज सिस्टम डॉट आउट डॉट प्रिंट एल नाउ दिस इज द प्रिंट स्टेटमेंट दैट जावा हैज इन अर्लियर प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज लाइक यू बेसिक यूज टू यू यूज टू राइट ओनली प्रिंट या बट हियर यू हैव टू राइट सिस्टम डॉट आउट डॉट प्रिंट एल एन और प्रिंट ठीक है नाउ प्रिंट एल एन इज लाइन वाइज प्रिंट लाइन एंड प्रिंट इज नॉर्मल लाइन सो यर इफ यू नोटिस सिस्टम एस इज कैपिटल नाउ अगेन आई हैव ऑलरेडी इन्फॉर्म यू ऑल दैट जावा इज अ केस सेंसिटिव लैंग्वेज एंड यू नीड टू टेक केयर ऑफ दैट नाउ इफ यू राइट सिस्टम एस स्मॉल देन यू विल गेट एर ओके सो बी केयरफुल विद दैट सो एंटर टू नंबर दैट इज द मैसेज दैट इज गोइंग टू यू नो विल डिस्प्ले ऑन आउटपुट स्क्रीन एंड देन यू आर गोइंग टू इनपुट सो एक्वल टू इन डॉट नेक्स्ट इंट in is a object of the predefined class scanner as you can see scanner i have written in this is an object we are going to learn what is an object don't no need to worry no need to overthink about object i'm going to explain you in uh, different other videos uh, in dot next int now i was talking about a predefined function inside the class predefined class scanner next int is a predefined function which is present inside predefined uh, class scanner okay so this is this is going to help you to take input so this is basically an an input statement to in take input in a variable okay so wherever you need to take input in a variable you have to write this next int now why why next int because it is an integer variable now if suppose the data type changes the function also changes like double next double uh, like this way okay the another variable we need so b equal to in dot next int again so we have taken input in two different variables now i'm going to do addition of a and b so i have written c equal to a plus b so c is the variable which is going to contain the uh, addition after a plus b adds together then we are going to print so system dot out dot print ln again the print statement and we have written sum inside double quotes why because it's a string type string means you have already learned i think string is a group of character okay so when whenever we need to print string we have to give inverted comma plus is a separator why because c is an integer data type variable and we are printing the variable with string data type so whenever you are going to print with uh, print two different data types you have to give a separator there so plus is not the plus sign that you are going to add plus is a separator okay please keep in mind that plus is a separator here okay so c and make sure you don't give the inverted comma after plus because the string ends there only before plus okay then you need to close the block of main and the block of abc see i have closed the block of main and the last one will be class so this statements are written inside main function and the main function and the whole thing is written inside class block okay always keep in mind so this is basically a uh, uh, you know a uh, basic java programming structure so in more uh, videos you're going uh, in uh, further videos i'm going to upload more programs with more functions with more uh, predefined classes predefined predefined functions so first this is the basic program that you're going to see and you're going to make the notes about the functions and the classes that i have told so that you can at least write the basic java programs okay so wait for the my for my next video for more uh, functions and more pro different programs okay please hit the like button if you like the video subscribe my channel for more videos if you are new thanks for watching everyone